President Biden back in Washington late Sunday trying to walk back his ad-libbed remark a day earlier in Poland. Are you concerned that by walking back the president's comments, you and other administration officials may be undermining him on the world stage? Last week, I told you that it was a mistake for the White House to even send Biden to Europe. If he thinks these appearances on the world stage are somehow going to boost him, he's got another thing coming. This entire trip to Brussels was just a waste of jet fuel. Biden should have just participated over Zoom or something. It would have been easier. The man's incoherent enough without jet lag. And unfortunately, the angle was correct. Now, overseas, in the midst of a horrifying war in Ukraine, Biden was a human wrecking ball. When asked about reports that Russia may use chemical weapons in Ukraine, he said the U.S. would respond in kind. Now, French President Macron immediately warned against the American president escalating things. So, of course, the White House had to do their favorite dance. It's called the walk back. The United States has no intention of using chemical weapons, period, under any circumstances. I will just say, with respect to any use of weapons of mass destruction, nuclear, chemical, biological, uh, Russia would pay a severe price. Got it. An in-kind response actually just means severe response. Okay. And while visiting the troops in Poland, Biden seemed to casually announce a 180-degree change in policy after originally insisting there'd be no U.S. boots on the ground in Ukraine. And you're going to see when you're there, and some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just, just saying, I'm not leaving. And again, his staff had to scramble. A White House spokesperson later tried to clarify the president's remarks, saying, the president has been clear we are not sending U.S. troops to Ukraine and there's no change in that position. But the most dangerous flub heard around the world were his ad lib comments on Putin. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Why is he always screaming as well? Now, this was another instance of Biden playing pundit instead of acting like a president. Directly targeting Putin plays right into his hands, boosting his propaganda efforts back on the home front and Mother Russia, and making it less likely that he'll take any off-ramp, even if one appears. Now, Reagan never said this during the darkest days of the Cold War. But Biden, he dismissed any diplomatic fallout today, playing cleanup man for himself. You have more foreign policy experience than any president who has ever held this office. You understand why people would believe you, as someone commanding one of the largest nuclear arsenals in the world, saying someone cannot remain in power is a statement of U.S. policy. And also, are you concerned about propaganda use of those remarks by the Russians? No and no. Nobody believes we're going to take down. I was, going to, I was talking about taking down Putin. I was expressing my outrage. Every time they send Biden out to speak or they build up some speech as a major address, he just digs himself and America into a deeper hole. It happens every time. Now, today, remember, was supposed to be his chance to reassure our allies after his big speech last week, but he still couldn't get it right, and things again went sideways. Do you believe what you said, that Putin can't remain in power? I'm not walking anything back. The fact of the matter is, I was expressing the more outrage I felt toward the way Putin is dealing and the actions of this man, just, just brutality. I want to make it clear, I wasn't then, nor am I now, articulating a policy change. I was expressing the more outrage that I feel, and I make no apologies for it. Okay. It's all getting really confusing for Joe and his team, because they even had to walk back his non-walk back. It sounded like you told U.S. troops they were going to Ukraine. You interpret the language that way. I was talking to the troops. We we're talking about helping train the troops in that are the, the Ukrainian troops that are in Poland. That's what the context. So when you said you're going to see when you're there, you were not intending. To I was see referring US to with meeting with and talking with the uh, Ukrainian troops that were in Poland. OK, this would obviously be a dangerous escalation. When reached for comment by Politico, a Pentagon spokesperson didn't respond, nor did representatives for the Ukrainian government. 
The White House got the Swiffer back out, saying there are Ukrainian soldiers in Poland interacting on a regular basis with U.S. troops, and that's what the president was referring to. Now, this has gone from sad to scary. He is the leader of the free world. He's not an ordinary citizen kind of finding things out as he goes, or maybe he is at this point. But this is a really sensitive situation. Every word an American president utters has global repercussions. He is simply not capable of freelancing. But nevertheless, the dutiful dupes at CNN tried their best to help in the impossible cleanup mission. He was speaking uh, really out of frustration and anger. Clearly, this is a president who is uh, responding with emotions here. Candor is unappreciated in diplomacy. This is a president who can very often be candid and tell you what he's thinking. And he's hugging children who have lost their parents and have seen death. That's what he was reflecting. It wasn't a policy change. And we're not used to presidents who do that. Yeah, Gloria, that's the, that's the concern. Biden's too candid. And of course, the media, they weren't alone. Here's the former CIA director and sec def. Why do you think President Biden made that mistake? I, I happen to think that Joe Biden, uh, you know, is Irish, uh, really has a great deal of compassion when he sees that people are suffering. Uh, and I, I think uh, it overwhelmed him in the. He actually said it's because Biden is Irish. OK, trafficking and emotionalism when it comes to Putin could make life even more painful for the Ukrainians by giving Putin an excuse to just really ramp things up even worse than they already been. But we got to remember, this isn't the first time Joe's cleanup crew used his empathy to excuse what was a major diplomatic mistake. President Biden directly labeled Putin a, quote, war criminal. Had something changed the administration's assessment? The president was, the president's remarks speak for themselves. Uh, he was speaking from his heart and speaking from what he's seen on television. The inconvenient truth is even the left knows that Biden has made a gargantuan mistake in Poland. Now look at this headline from Salon of all places. Nine words that shook the world. What was Joe Biden thinking? Now, from day one, it was obvious that the entire rationale for this trip was political. The White House, it looks like, hoped that seeing Biden on the international stage would somehow distract voters back at home from all the economic calamities they're facing. Of course, the opposite has happened. For Democrats, the results of the new NBC poll are simply nightmarish. In Chuck Todd's own words, by a fairly large 71 to 28 percent margin, Americans say they do not have a lot of confidence in President Biden's ability to respond to this war. 57 percent say we are already at war with Russia or will be within a year. What's more, 68 percent would prefer Mr. Biden make the economy his top priority. Overall, President Biden's job approval stands at just 40 percent, with 55 percent disapproving. This is his worst showing yet in our poll since he became president. Everyone knows that if you put a microphone in front of Biden, he's bound to say anything that pops into, into his mind at the time. It's always been this way. When he was Obama's VP, no one ever took him seriously or what he said seriously, not even Obama. And now as president, he doesn't have the self-discipline or the mental acuity to weigh his words more carefully. He undermines the very efforts that his administration is making to keep Europe on our side. And we all know that the major NATO countries have no interest in forcing regime change in Russia. We all know that. But Biden thinks that appealing to the press corps right in front of him is what matters most. Well, of course, it's not what matters most. The White House, I think, keeps hoping for its George W. Bush moment with the bullhorn on all the rubble, that somehow this crisis in Ukraine is going to help his party in the midterms like it helped Republicans in 2002. Are you concerned this remark might escalate the conflict? No, I'm not. I'm not at all. NATO has never, ever, 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 ever been as strong as it is today. Never. Never. Now, the entire problem here is that no one inside the Biden administration has a clear strategy about what we're actually trying to accomplish 
and how to advance our interests in a prudent and sophisticated manner. The only strategy seems to be to keep the media happy and hope for a rally around the flag momentum going into November. So all their time and effort is getting eaten up by their PR and their spin campaign. They did the same thing, remember, leading up to the Afghan withdrawal, and we know how that ended. They keep getting this wrong. It's, it's actually, it's unreal to watch this when you really sit back and think about it. The way to fix your poll numbers, Joe, isn't to showcase America's weakness and get bogged down in an impossible situation in Europe. The way to fix your poll numbers is to make America stronger. That means a domestic policy crafted by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Janet Yellen. No, no, that's not the one. That's only going to deliver more misery for more people. And unfortunately, trying to cl clean that up will be left to the Republicans who end up trouncing them in the fall and in 2024. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.